University of Alabama, Birmingham, enjoying his evening tonight with his daughter on a special graduation day for him and his daughter and his family as well. We'd like to welcome you all. Juwan, good game today going on for the Bulldogs. Two in a row, and they're looking to make it three in a row now. Yeah, and they have a um, big competition right here with the 6-2 and two Lipskin um, Bison. They're a great team. They're led by Will Pruitt, who's one of the best shooters, surprisingly, in their division. He's an 80% three-point shooter. It's a low volume, but he's knocking them down. Then they also have Jason Ognerich. He's averaging nearly 20 points per game at the forward position. And with us recycling a lot in our bigs and trying to figure out where we're going to be, this will be a good test for us and see – with swag play coming right around and see how we're fitting around um, right here in the division. And you hit the nail right on the head. A lot of great players on that team as well as a tough team as well as they lost by one point on the road in South Bend, Indiana, hostile environment. And despite that, they gave their best and they took it to them. And they also went deep as well in the ASUN tournament this past season as well, finishing just 14 and 19 on the season they surprised some teams as well just like the Bulldogs did in the past tournament time last season yeah they're a very competitive team they play with a lot of energy they get out they score the ball and with um coach O looking to continue this winning streak I like to see how his players come off this two-game winning streak and see if we can bring this into conference play as we need to go ahead and get right as a lot of teams looking good so far this year in the sweat definitely when we come back we will get the tip off and basketball action kicked off right here at Elmore Gymnasium. For now, we go to break. It's the Alabama AM Athletics YouTube live stream. Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium as we prepare for tip-off. Lineup looking eerie similar here, but we have a quick change for Coach O and the Bulldogs as Austin Harville will start tonight along with big EJ Williams as the 
men and maroon and white win the tip. Tucker with the ball now. Hands the ball off to Hicks. Hicks over to Harville. Harville driving now. Spins. Tough shot. Fadeaway is up. Bounces around the rim. No good. Ball is tipped out. But into the hands of Boyd. Boyd match up against Tucker. Also big change here in a tough blow for the Bulldogs tonight. No Messiah Thompson as he is out against this tough Lipscomb team. Yeah, there's going to be a tough matchup change for our um, Bulldogs. Messiah's been a good scorer for us and a nice pickup for Coach O. I'd like to see how the rest of our team will pick up in his absence. As the Bison are able to strike first. Schneer is able to get that mid-range to go. Williams misses the pass from Smith out of bounds. Tough play there on the pick and roll. Ball went right in between the hands of Williams. The Bulldogs have taken care of the ball, taken care of the ball a lot better here early on in the season. However, that one results in two. And points off turnovers is one of the things that came back to haunt us early in the season, especially with those first couple games. So I'd like to see us have a play a cleaner game of basketball as Lipskin is a team we don't need to get out, let get out get out on the lead early on us. Tough layup by Smith. No good on the reverse. Ball tipped out for Tucker, and he knocks down the mid-range. Luckily for AM, this is not an unfamiliar backcourt here. For the Bulldogs, as Tucker and Hicks matched up together pretty well in the backcourt last season, despite the change with Thompson being the new backcourt mate for Hicks, Tucker is going to fill in pretty easily here and be pretty comfortable as he gets that assist quickly for Garrett Hicks for three. Yeah, you're right on cue with that one. Garrett, Garrett um, he's used to being in the backcourt. Um, <clears throat> as Ognosevich misses that one. Tucker inside now. Nice fake. Gets open and gets the layup off the glass and in. You got to continue what I was saying. Cam and Gary, they're a nice backcourt. They put in a lot of time together, and this isn't nothing new to them. So nice to see that they're putting their stamp on this game early and with a nice lead to start this game off. Asadula swinging the ball around. Nice ball moving from Lixicum. Inside. Nice pass from Absadula. That shot's denied by Harville. Pass back inside and slammed in by Agnosevich. Yeah, great block by Austin, but we can't let him get on the offensive boards and get the rebound right there on the second chance points. Agnosevich had a huge layup for the Bison as the time was nearly expiring. He was able to get a layup off the glass and in in the big win against Belmont. And he's a big point, um, big point of this Bison offense. We don't need to let him get going early. Quick fast break as Agnosevich throws down another one. Yeah, he's looking to bring that goal down night. That's the second vicious dunk he had in a row. Lips to come looking to bring the energy here early on in the first half. Still a one-point ball game for the Bulldogs. Williams tries to respond with the mid-range. That one's off the front iron. Pruitt pushing the ball. Pass inside for Agnosevich looking to take another dunk. He's going to be bumped by Williams on the dribble. We'll have a foul on the floor. Yeah, he's doing a good job of getting out on these breaks. He was Before EJ fouled him, looking like he was going to have another slam right there. Need to slow the game down and try and get our defense going. That'll be Williams first. We'll have a couple substitutions here for head coach Otis Hughley as Brandon Powell checks in as well as... Akinobi. Agnosevich now. Cross court pass. Nice hockey pass over into the hands of Boyd. Boyd tries a shot. No good. Rebounded by Akinobi. Tucker driving on the left side. Tough left handed layup. No. Nearly put back and slammed in by Akinobi. Unable to. Close in on that putback dunk. Still a one-point ball game. Lipscomb tries a three. That one is knocked down by Schneer. 
It, very up tempo pace, both teams playing right now, and it's leading to a lot of scoring so far in this game. Akinobe hands the ball off to Tucker, up top for Powell. Powell looking to hand the ball off mm. for Smith, out of bounds. Will Lipsicum will take over with 15 18 remaining in the first half. The Bulldogs have work to do as they trail 11 to 7. Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium as AM trails 11 to 7. Tough play offensively for the Bulldogs early on here with a couple of turnovers resulting in quick and fast offense for Lipscomb. And this, this up tempo pace is looking like it's going to favor Lipscomb. They're doing a good job of playing smart basketball, they're moving the ball around, and it looks like he's getting another one. Ooh, that's Agnosevich. Nice Throws the hammer down. Tough play there by Powell. And Looking to try to beat him there. And it was just a little too late as Agnosevich was already in the air for the two-hand slam. Yeah, he was right on cue where I was saying. He's been looking like he wanted to put everything in the goal tonight. As he's, all his points tonight have been two, three ferocious two-hand slams. Tucker gets a screen from Akinobi. Over to Powell. Powell tees up a three. No good. Rebounded by Akinobe. No, ball is loose on the ground and recovered by Lipscomb. Again, it's back over to Schneer. Now inside for Agnosevic again. Cross-court pass. Nice fake by McGinnis. Quickly finds the ball over for three. No good by Boyd. Good job. Got a fight for the loose ball on the ground. Lipscomb's able to recover. We'll have a jump ball. Possession arrow remaining with the Bison. Yeah, but that was a great hustle play right there by Brandon and Damon right there. Not letting Arnazovi go up and get another dunk. It was looking like he was trying to after that offensive rebound. Quick substitution here for Lipscomb checking in. It's going to be number 14, Tommy Murr. Sophomore guard out of Athens, Alabama. Not too far from home. Also checking in is Trey Benham. Ball is broken up and stolen. Here comes Tucker pushing the floor. Finds the ball off the Hicks. He tries a three. That one rolls in and out. Rebounded by Murr. Murr is pushing the ball up the floor now. Over into the hands of Schneer. McGinnis. Cross-court pass over in the corner. Schneer tries a three. That one's no good. Rebounded by Akinobe. Tucker pushing the break. Looking to get inside. Tough left-handed shot is rejected. Powell nearly was able to tie up the ball before Schneer was able to get the ball out of his hands. Cross court pass over into the corner. Three is teed up and knocked down by Benham. Smith driving baseline. He's going to be fouled on the floor. That'll be on Benham's first. In 
into the ball game for the Bulldogs is number two, Amari Peak. Also checking again, it's going to be Lorenzo Downey. As for Lipscomb, checking in, it's going to be number 35, Grant Asman as well. Peak driving, spinning, tough right-hand layup is good off the spin move. Mari Peak already looking to make early impact into the game. Always been a great energy guy for the Bulldogs so far this season. Yeah, and it looks like he's stepping more and more into his role off the bench. He's starting to score more. He's getting to the basket and becoming a great player for us off the bench so far on this roster. Benham knocks down another three in the corner. And Dipskin, they're playing a good unselfish basketball out there. Not holding the ball too long in their hands. They're moving the ball around and getting some good shots up. Akinobe over to Hicks. Hicks swings the ball over to Downey. Downey cross-court pass over to Tucker. Nearly hit the referee with the ball. Downey has the ball. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. Takes a fake. Three is up. No good. Rebounded by Akinobe. No, out of his hands and out of bounds. Ball will remain with the Bulldogs. Catching a break there. Yes, we'll have an adjustment here by the officials. It will be Lipscomb's ball out of the timeout break. But for now, we will cut to break as the Bulldogs have work to do, trailing by 10, 19 to 9. Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium as the Bulldogs trailed 19 to 9 early on here. Juwan, where do you think some of the quick adjustments Coach Otis Uli has made so far during that timeout break? Well, that's one we need right there. Um, that's the third or fourth three-pointer we've had so far in this first half. We need to do a good job of running them off and trying getting them to feed the ball down low. Besides Arnazovic, they haven't had that much going on inside for us, but they're doing a good job of shooting outside. So we have to add a little more pressure on the defensive side. And then on the offensive side, we need to slow it down. It seems like this up-tempo play is favoring Lipscomb, and we're turning the ball over a little bit and settling for a lot of long jumpers. We need to just settle down and get into the meat and potatoes of our offense. Downey over the peak. Now Tucker out to Akinobe. Akinobe looking for Hicks, finds Hicks on the handoff, and we'll have a foul here on the floor. Foul's going to be charged to McGinnis. That'll be his first. Checking into the ball game for a and is number 24, Eric Lee. Lee also saw minutes versus Lipscomb last season as a and pulled off Looked like they were going to pull off a huge win on the road in Nashville. Instead, came up short as they took the tough loss. 63 66. Tough game, but for the Bulldogs, they will see six returning players from that game. Downey. One second on the clock, takes a tough three, no good. Ball is nearly tipped and in to the hands of another Lipscomb player. 
Back and forth action going on here in the forecourt. Murr quickly swinging the ball over to Pruitt, back to Murr. McGinnis, 10 seconds on the shot clock for Lipscomb. Pass nearly broken up by Lee. Now over to Pruitt. He'll try a three. No good, but we'll have a foul on the floor going the other way. Foul's going to be charged to Benham. And that was one of the better defensive positions we've had so far um, for the um, Bulldogs. We did a good job of keeping them out and um, keep them out of the paint and making them move the ball around and forcing the shot at the end of that shot clock. Yes, we'll have a couple of Bison substitutions here. Checking in Darren Boyd as well as number 23, and Asan Asadula. Also checking into the game now, late substitution is number 41, Jacob O. Jacob Agnostovich. Yeah, he's really stamped his name in this game early. Been a key point in this Lipscomb offense. I'd like to see how our Bulldogs can adjust with him being back on this floor. Peak over to Downey. Out to Hicks. Over to Peak again. Nifty ball handling by Peak. Gets inside, looking to pass. That one's broken up. Made tough pass to get there in short area. It's Agnosevich's layup is no good. Rebounded by Brewer. He just checked into this game as well. As he kicks the ball over to Hicks. Hicks gets a screen from Brewer now. Hicks on the pick and pop to Brewer. Three is up. No good. So we'll have a foul here on the floor. Foul be charged to Downey. That'll be his first. Trying to go for that loose ball. A little bit too much contact there on that one. Yeah, great hustle. Just a little too physical right there. But I like the, um, the hustle on trying to get the offensive rebounds. We haven't had that many so far in this game. Checking in for Lipscomb is number 32, Matt Schneer. Also checking into the game for the Maroon and White is number 11, Austin Harville. Yeah, I like to see how he'll play coming back on the court. He's coming off one of his better games of the season with 12 points and not missing a shot, and then with a few blocks as well. I'd like to see if he can put his stamp on this game for the Bulldogs. We need a little energy right now in this game. Pass inside to Schneer. Schneer taking a lot of contact there from Lee. Layup's no good. Here come the Bulldogs pushing the ball up the floor. Lee over inside to Harville. He tries to fake. Layup is up. No good. Ball is loose. And is going the opposite way. Tough couple possessions here for AM. Unable to get the ball inside. Yeah, Lipson is making it tough for us to get open shots. We're doing a better job defensively this um since the last time out, but offensively we just gotta get some more points on the board. Just feels like there's a lid on the rim right now for AM. Yeah, when it's like that, you have to keep shooting. Can't let this um, filter with your confidence. Less than 10 seconds now on the clock. Agnosevich on the floor. Ball was nearly saved by Downey. Great defense. Two seconds on the shot clock for the Bison. Yes, yeah, that was a good job of Eric right there. Fronting him, front of his man, making the pass hard and not letting him get an easy finish. And now with two seconds left on the shot clock, we need to finish this off and get our going on the offensive side. Quick substitution here for A&M as Cameron Tucker checks back into the ball game. Through it, looking to inbound the ball. Finds Asadula. One second. Tough shot. Blocked. Great defense by Harville. Tucker now pushing the ball up the floor. Pass over to Downey. Downey driving now. Nearly lose the ball. He finds Lee on the wing. Brewer over to Tucker. Look inside for Harville. He's being denied hard. Pass is stolen by Boyd. Yeah, looks like there's a miscommunication between them on that one. Boyd pushing the pace. A pass. Over from Schneer to As Asadula. Now back into his hands on the block. Tries a tough hook, and it is up and in. Yeah, he bullied his way in the paint for that one right there. Tucker quickly pushing the ball up to Lee on the wing. Now in the hands of Brewer. Brewer, quick handoff over to Tucker. Tucker gets a screen from Harville. On the baseline now, looking. Met by Asadula. Nice backdoor pass over to Downey for the right-hand layup to stop the dry spell. 
Great find right there by Cameron. Staying patient and finding Downey right there on the cut. Agnosevich now on the block. Matched up against Brewer. Spinning. Nearly loses his balance. Layup is no good. Touches nothing at all as he's able to come up with his own offensive rebound. Out to Pruitt. Pruitt driving baseline. Turn. Spins. Finds Agnosevich now on the wing. Asdula. Tried to drive inside. That one is stolen by Harville. Tucker over into the hands of Brewer. Tucker tries a step back mid-range. That one's nothing but net. As we'll have a timeout here by the Bison with seven minutes remaining in the first half. A&M is looking to march back into this one as they trail 24-13. Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium as A&M trails 24-13. Chauncey Sanders here joined alongside by Juwan Davis. Juwan, it's been a tough one early on in the first half, but as of late right now, it feels like the Bulldogs have got comfortable enough now on offense to get into what they want to do and yeah, execute and it. And they're using defense to create that offense. We've been doing a good job of limiting the open shots. And we're keeping Arnasovic out of the paint. We're being real physical with him and not letting him get those easy dunks he was getting earlier in the game. Three ball, no good by Boyd. Here comes Maroon and White. Smith now on the floor. Gets a screen from Brewer. Tough right-hand layup off the glass. Through the contact, no good. Rebounded by McGinnis as he pushes the ball up the floor. Arnasovic looked to make a play there. Throws the ball over into the corner. McGinnis tries a long three. That one touches everything but the rim. Saved by Agnosevich into the hands of Tucker. Excuse me, as Hicks. Smith missed that layup as Hicks found Smith. Lob is up. Agnosevich is able to find that one through the net. As the last play there on the fast break, he was able to find someone in the corner. Lots of fast breaks here, Juwan, so far. Yeah, we need to slow the pace down. When Lipson is getting out and moving, that's when they're scoring. When we slowed them down these last couple of possessions, it's helped us defensively, and then on the offensive side, it's helped us get set up on the other side. So we need to continue to leave the pace down low as Lipson likes to play a tempo basketball. Harvell's three was no good in a corner. Pass went out of bounds. Maroon and White will take over. We'll have a quick substitution here for AM. Checking back into the ball game is number 33, Blaze Akinobe. Also, checking in for the Bison is number 14, Tommy Murr. Tucker bringing the ball up the floor over into the hands of Brewer. Now back out for Brewer. Brewer looking inside for Akinobe. That one was red fully and broken up. McGinnis driving up the floor. Kicks the ball back out to Murr. Murr, quick cross-court pass over to Pruitt. Now over for McGinnis. Takes a little body there. And that layup is up and deflected by Akinobe. But he's walking up the floor gingerly here. We're going to keep an eye on that one. Passes inside for Brewer. That one's broken up by McGinnis. Brewer fighting for the ball down low. As we'll have a foul on the floor. 
How about that deflection from Akinobe? But looked like he was favoring as he was coming up the floor offensively. Quick substitution for AM. Checking again is number 22, Lorenzo Downey. Also checking back into the ballgame is number 12, Brandon Powell. And one thing I'd like to note, we're playing very physical basketball, but both teams are not that high on the foul count, on foul count with four for Lipscomb and two for us. So, refs are letting us play in. It's been a nice, really physical, good, old-fashioned basketball game so far. Checking in for the Bison was number 32, Matt Schneer. Hicks inside, tough floater, bounces around the rim and is in. How special has he been this year already for AM as expected? And also want to send a congratulations to him as Akinobe breaks up that pass and gets the steal. Hicks was able to cross the 1,000 point margin. Not a lot of players are able to do that as Downey gets that mid range to go. Yeah, and Gary, we've watched him grow from his freshman year being just a scorer to developing playmaking and finishing skills to where he's the best player, he's the leader of this team, and he's been a big point of this aim and basketball program. Murr's layup is sent away by Smith. What a play. Checking into the ball game for the Bison. New face here on the floor, number 11, Quincy Clark. Sophomore guard out of Westerville, Ohio. Westerville Central High School graduate. Not too far from your stop the ground, huh? Three ball is kicked up and is knocked down out of the inbound play there by Benham. Yeah, we can't let him get the shooting. Dude. Been doing a good job of running off the three-point line recently, but can't let him get that going so far in this game as we're trying to cut his lead down. Hicks tees up a three of his own, and he knocks it down. Starting to heat up. He's got that floater and then that three point. So he's nice to see Gary getting shot so, so far in the second half. As he's able to bring the Bulldogs back within single digits. A little over three minutes remaining. Pass is too high out of bounds for Clark as the Bulldogs will take over. We got a timeout on the floor with 3.41 remaining. AM still fighting in this one as we get ready to close out the first half 29 20. Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium as the Bulldogs trail by 9, 29 to 20. Hicks gets a double screen looking for Downey. He finds Downey. He'll tee up a three. That one's too hard. No good. Rebounded by Benham. Clark driving, spinning, finds. Agnasevich open for three. That one's no good. Rebounded by Akinobe. Hicks pushing the ball up the floor now. Over to Powell. Powell looking to go to work on the baseline. What a fake by Powell. Takes a tough fadeaway finish. That one's no good. Ball rolls out of bounds, but will remain with AM with the fresh clock. Into the ball game for the Bison is number two, 
Will Pruitt. Also checking in is Asan Asadula. Checking back in for the maroon and white. It's number three, Cameron Tucker. And the energy has really been turned up for our um, men bulldog, men's bulldog team coming out um, ever since that second time out. Really been playing with a lot more energy and it's helped us cut this lead down. Hicks over to Powell. Powell, tough finish over in the hands of Smith. Takes a three. That one's no good. Rebounded by Tucker. Tucker inside. Takes the contact. Layup is short. No good. But he'll be at the line for two. Yeah, good hustle right there by Cam. Being a big, being a big man for a change. Getting a rebound. And not being scared to go up right there in the trenches to get him a foul. I think Lips comes 15 foul. At the line is Cameron Tucker. Timeout versus this same Bison team. Twenty-one. Tucker was able to pour in ten points, four of ten from the field, two of two from the free throw line. Doesn't look like he'll be perfect during this ball game, but he has been a great playmaker, making up for Thompson as the second free throw is no good. Quickly rebounded by Lee. Smith over for Hicks. He'll try three. That one's no good. Rebounded by Akinobe. Looking for Hicks. That one's broken up and stolen by Murr. Asadula. Low pass there. Lipscomb still able to hold on to it. Benham driving now. Out to Asadula. Quickly over for Burr. Pruitt, excuse me. Murr now driving, gets the pass inside for Asadula, broken up by Akinobe. Five seconds on the shot clock. What a wild possession. Three balls up, no good. Rebounded by Asadula. He drives, he takes a tough layup, no good through the contact. And Benham will be at the line on the putback as that one was missed. Foul be charged to Smith. And our Bulldogs, they're doing a good job of scrambling with the ball, rotating, and just couldn't get that offensive rebound off of the miss. I mean, defensive rebound off of the miss, excuse me. I'll be Smith third, team's third. At the line, it's going to be number three, Trey Benham. Benham, the sophomore guard out of Concord, North Carolina. Checking again for the Bison is number four in Darren Boyd. Also checking again for the Maroon and Whites, number 34, EJ Williams. Second free throw is good. Now a 10-point game, 30-20. Hicks gets a screen from Williams. Out to peak, inside for Williams. Williams takes a tough fake through the contact of Asadula. That layup rolls around and is no good. Good take, just going to get the friendly roll on the um, shot right there. Through it. Out to Asadula. See, hands the ball off to Benham and gets the screen. Asadula now out to Boyd. Boyd hesitates, takes a tough layup through the contact. No good. Rebounded by Williams. Tucker out to Hicks. Hicks looking inside for Peak. He finds Peak. What a pass from Hicks. He's staying in this game. Just can't cut that lead all the way down. Clark out to Asadula. Now looking for a backdoor pass. We're gonna have a foul on the floor as Peak went crashing to the floor. That'll be Peak's first. Team's fourth. And like we've been saying, this has been a real physical basketball game. Been having a lot of collisions, a lot of contact being made, and looking like it's favoring the Bulldogs as they're using that physicality to keep them in this game. Forty-three seconds remaining in the first half. Clark looking to inbound the ball. Say to find Asadula back into Clark. Now back out to Asadula. 
pass, a little too much, and it's stolen by Smith. Smith lays the ball in, looking for the two-hand slam as he finishes the ball safely. Oh, yeah. pass is too much for Clark, and stolen by Peek. He'll be at the line for the one-on-one -one opportunity. Foul's gonna be charged to Clark. No, we'll have a wrong signal there by the official. It'll be team six, team foul. And I like the energy that we've been playing with lately in this game. We're letting defense turn to offense, and now we have a chance to cut this down to a one-position game, potentially. Tucker. Looking to manage this time correctly here. One last possession for the Maroon and White. Gets a screen from Williams. Tucker penetrating now on the baseline. Turn, spin, takes the contact. Looking, takes a tough shot. That one's off the front iron, no good. Williams misses the put back. And that will do it for the first half. AM will go into halftime, trailing 30 to 24. Juwan, it's been an interesting first half, though, despite AM trailing by six. What's your first half initial thoughts here as we go to break? Well, we came into this game a little slow. Lipskin was doing a good job of getting out early on this, getting in the fast break and getting uh, easy opportunities with a lot of vicious dunks to start the game. But once we got um, settled into the game, we let defense turn into offense. They're doing a good job of forcing turnovers and turning into the offense. Then on the um, offensive side as well, Garrett's doing a good job of keeping us afloat. He's knocked down a couple threes. He's hit a couple floors in the paint. So I like us to keep this energy in the second half as if we keep this up, we'll be able to cut this lead down nice and easily. Also, AM shot 18% during from the three-point line last season against this Lipscomb ball club, and they have shot at a way better clip during this ball game so far. They had their struggles earlier on in the first half, but they were able to find it early as we got ready to finish the second half. How do you think AM should come out early out of this halftime break and try to get back into this ball game as they only trail by six now? Keep their foot on the gas pedal. They're going to, like you said, doing a good job of shooting better shots, they're getting open shots, and when they're missing it, they're doing a good job of hustling for the offensive rebounds and keeping them off of the um, fast break. Like you said earlier, they got up on us early, getting out in the break. So if we could just keep this game, slow down, and just play with the same energy that we've been playing with since halfway through that first half, we'll be able to keep up with this Nipsey team. Definitely. As we get ready to go to break, we'll be looking forward for Jawan's Second half adjustments coming out of the half as AM trails here at Elmore Gymnasium 30 24.
got ten points behind. But by the time the game is over, we should have more than that other school. If you're with me, let me hear you say, yeah. yeah. I said, if you're with me, let me hear you say, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And all together, let's say, and the whole our family. Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium. As we get ready to start the second half, the Bulldogs trail 30-24. Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium. I'm Chauncey Sanders being joined alongside by Juwan Davis. It was a tale of two periods there early on in the first half as the Bulldogs were stuck at nine points earlier on. And then they finally found a way to get back into this ball game to end the first half as they now trail by six. Yeah, it seemed like we became a new team once we um, entered that 10 minute mark. Started playing with a lot more energy, shooting a lot better shots and getting now on the break as, like Limpskin was earlier in the game. And with it being six points, if we could keep this energy up, momentum can change just like that for us. Asadula out to Schneer. She kicks it for three from Boyd. That one's no good. Tucker pushing the break now. So we'll have a quick foul here on the floor. That one will be charged to Boyd. We are all here at Elmore Gymnasium on this great graduation night. Also want to point out, no head coach Van Petaway tonight, the legendary head coach usually joining me aside here on this great broadcast. As we know him to be the great man, the great coach, but today, he is wearing the father cap as we want to congratulate him and his wonderful daughter and the Petaway family as a whole on her accomplishment graduating from UAB today. And I said, Coach, you know what? Today is a great excuse for you to miss the game. You go ahead and enjoy it. Enjoy the time you have with yourself and your family. And you guys just congratulations and I just was so proud to hear that and it's also a great thing to see graduating uh, students as well today yeah. earlier on at the new event center yeah, like you said not only for coaches for the daughter but for the whole bulldog this class I'd like to congratulate everybody everybody doesn't get to do it good. you know it's a, a nice ceremony and exercise to show all the hard work that you put in and anybody who can graduate and walk across that stage as a bulldog I'm proud for you. I'm happy for you myself. Asdula looking to get fancy with the behind the back pass. Tried to find his teammate in Pruitt. That one was a little too much for Pruitt. Out of bounds. Maroon in white basketball. And we weren't seeing that many turnovers like this from the Limpskin team early in the game. But like, like we said, ever since that time out near the 10-minute mark for this Bulldog team, we've been playing with a lot of energy. We've been forcing a lot of turnovers and just really making it a comfortable game for Limpskin as we get a turnover for ourselves right there. Schneer will try a three. That one off the front iron, no good. Rebounded by Akanobe, who made the quick adjustment here by Coach Otis Hewley. Swapping Akanobe for Williams to start the second half. Smith layup is no good as he's on the floor looking for an explanation from the official. Boyd. At the corner, drives, takes the contact. As the layup goes in, it will be a block. Mm. And the foul, as Boyd will be at the line for one. Coach Hooley cannot believe the call. It was a bit of a late call there as the officials for both the baseline judge as well as the side were looking for an agreement there on the foul. Foul be charged to Harville. Let's know they will actually charge that foul to Tucker. That'll be his first, team's first. 33-26. Takes a fake over to Tucker now. Tucker gets a screen from Blaze. Tucker over to Harville. 
Harvell looking inside for Akinobe. He finds him. Layup is no good. Pruitt pushing the ball up the floor now. He's met with the trap. Ball nearly loose there. Pruitt fighting to find someone wide open. He finds Schneer. Schneer cross-court pass over to Boyd as he's able to control the ball inside for Ag Tucker pushing the break now. Weaving through traffic. Takes the tough layup. No good. Rebounded by Schneer. Pruitt dancing now. Takes the screen from Hasadula. Cross court pass over to Boyd on the corner. Boyd out to Hasadula. Out for Pruitt. Pruitt tries to contest the three. That one's no good. Out of the hands of Akinobe as Tucker is able to save it. He'll be fouled on this diving, saving play. Nice hustle there from Tucker as he's slow to get up. Substitution here for AM checking into the ball game. It's going to be number 34. Big EJ Williams also checking in alongside him was number 24, Eric Lee. Tucker gets a screen from Williams. Out to Hicks. Hicks inside for Harville. A little too much off the body of Agnosovic. No. Baseline judge instead rules that Harville's foot was out. Checking in for the Bison is going to be number three, Trey Benno. 33-27. Agnasevich over to Pruitt. Now Boyd on the wing. Up top for Asadula. Boyd looking inside for Asadula. He's going to be fouled. As that foul will come on the floor, it'll be charged to Harville. It'll be his first, team second. We'll have a timeout here on the floor. 16 minutes early on here in the second half. Here at Elmore Gymnasium as AM trails Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium as AM trails 33-26. Chauncey Sanders here being joined alongside by Juwan Davis. It's been an interesting one to start the second half. It's been a back and forth ball game outside of the and one opportunity for Boyd. Not much has been able to go for either team here offensively as Pruitt stepped out of bounds. Yeah, you were right on cue with that one. Yeah, both teams are looking for a spark in the second half with four minutes of basketball being played and only three points being scored. I know both coaches are looking to see who's going to be that spark offensively as both teams are in the dry spell right now. Tucker over to Hicks. Hicks steps back, takes up mid-range. That one's good. If there's any player for the Bulldogs that can score and get us out of the dry spell, it's Gary Hicks. He's prone to go on hot streets for us, and this would be the perfect time for him to give one for the Bulldogs with it being now a five-point game. Boyd penetrating out to Asadula. Pass is inside for Agnasevich. He takes the contact. No good. Rebounded by Harville. 
Tucker pushing the ball up the floor now. Out to Lee. Lee driving is denied as he was going up towards the rim by Asadula. Bulldog basketball with 22 seconds left on the shot clock. Checking in for the Bison is going to be number zero, A.J. McGinnis. If he looks like a familiar face, it most likely is because he is being from Huntsville, Alabama. Homegrown here, making the homecoming return. Hicks penetrating out to Williams. Williams thought about shooting. Instead, spins, driving. No, out to T Hicks. Back inside now for Williams. Williams looking to go to work. Tough shot, no good. Rebounded by Harvell. He takes the contact. Layup is missed. McGinnis driving. Ball is stolen by Hicks. Hicks pushing the break now. Over to Lee. Back out for Hicks. Takes a fake. Out for Tucker. Ball is nearly stolen and saved by Boyd into the hands of Harvell. Tucker directing traffic out to Lee. Lee on the wing. Picks up his dribble out to Williams. Williams will take a mid-range. That one's no good. Ball is tipped. And tipped right into the hands of Benham. Harville looking to go to work down there for those offensive opportunities. That layup is good by Boyd. Yeah, we can't let these dead periods like this on the offensive side affect the defensive side of the ball. We've been doing a good job of stopping them and on, from getting on the break, but that's been where all their points came from so far in the second half. Harville, nice move, is able to get the layup to go off the glass and in. What a move by Austin as he's able to give a and a nice boost there. Looking for a great offensive possession. He does best that for a and &M. Boy driving baseline. Baseline pass across to McGinnis. Now top for Asadula. Over to the wing for Benham. That one's no good. Rebounded by Boyd as he'll be tripped up by Eric Lee. That'll be AM's fourth. Quick swap here for the Maroon and White. Checking in for AM. It's going to be number two, Amari Peak. Also number 22, Lorenzo Downey. And joining them is going to be Xavier Brewer. Brewer, the Morehouse transfer. Yes, we have a wet spot here on the floor. We'll take a quick break. to Agnasovic as he'll be called for a block. Mm. There'll be a blocking foul on the floor on Peak. That will now be AM's fourth team foul. Yeah, he probably had a miscommunication there on the tally on the fouls. No live stats here tonight, unfortunately. Pruitt tees up a three. That one is good for Benham. Excuse me. Nice pass there. From Pruitt to Benham. 38-30. And Benham is the leading three-point shooter for this um, Lipscomb team. You can't let him get going offensively. Three-point shots like that extend the lead. Tucker fakes on the mid-range out to Peak. Peak spinning. Takes a tough layup, and it's good, and the foul. Really been a good game from Mari off the bench. He's been playing with a lot of energy and getting nice finishes below as he's going for three the old-fashioned way to try and bring it back down to five. So we'll have a quick substitution here for the Bison, as Shamir is checked back into the ball game. McGinnis gets a screen from Agnasovic. Nice drive by Benham as he brings the ball back out. 
over to Pruitt. And it's stolen by Hicks. Hicks pushing the break. Over to Tucker. He'll take the easy layup, and it's good. One possession ball game as A&M comes alive here in the second half. Ball nearly stolen by Brewer. It is stolen by Brewer. Brewer, blowing on the break. He slams it home. Xavier Brewer with the two-hand slam. Timeout, Lipscomb. And that dunks like that to get the energy going here in Elmore. At one point game, the energy plays going to the timeout. With 12-21 remaining, A&M are drawing up a run here as they trail now by just one, 38-37. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium as we have a quick glance here at the wonderful cheerleaders of Alabama A&M University here on the floor. Juwan, it's been a great one to start the second half as defense quickly turning into offense here for the Maroon and White as Hicks had a nice steal that turned into a transition layup for Tucker. And then just before the timeout break, Xavier Brewer was able to come up with a steal of his own and get the solo two-hand slam to go. And that's been the story of our a and team so far, turning defense and offense. When we're getting out on the break, we've been a pretty good, dangerous team as well. And with it being one point, nice to see it as we get another one right there. Nice steal there by Tucker, pushing the break himself now. Out to Hicks. Hicks will tee up a three. No good. Ball is nearly loose as we'll have a foul here on the floor. That foul will be charged to Downey as Schneer went for the rebound. Yeah, that's the team I was saying. Both teams have been very dangerous on the break so far in this game. That'll be Downey second, team's fifth. As we'll have a timeout here on the floor. 11.50 remaining in the second half. A&M still trail by one, 38-37. Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium. After the timeout break, AM will keep the same lineup on the floor with Tucker, Hicks, Pete, Downey, as well as Xavier Brewer. As the Bison are pushing the ball up the floor now, Tommy Murr has checked into the game. She swings the ball over to Benham. Benham out to Boyd. Matched up by Downey. Boyd nearly losing his footing there. He's able to recover it. Swung the ball out for Benham. That one's too much on it. Out of bounds. AM basketball. And if I'm not mistaken, with a um, bucket right here, this will be our first lead of the game. So nice to see our Bulldogs have really turned it up here in this second half. 
Tucker over to Hicks. Hicks gets a screen from Brewer. Out to Peak. Peak driving now. Nice behind the back. Nearly lost his footing. Takes a tough turnaround shot. That one falls short as he was grasping his knee after the shot. Tough offense possession there for AM. Three is up and quickly responded by Benham as he's able to catch that one and make this a four point ball game. Been a hot hand for Lipscomb so far in the second half, but that's his second three in the last couple minutes of the game. Brewer on the baseline. Takes a fake. Tough fadeaway shot. That one's no good. Tough couple possessions back to back here for AM. Benno nearly loses the ball as he's almost able to recover it. Brewer recovers the ball out to Peak. Peak takes a nice right hand layup off the glass and in. 41 39. These turnovers are starting to come in bunches for the Bulldogs. They've been doing a good job of. Playing, playing real aggressive and being real handsy on the on ball defender, and they're forcing a lot of turnovers. Murr over to Schneer. Out to Benham. Now up top for Murr. He'll tee up a three. That one is no good. And um, Elmore, his name is definitely let him know that. So we know Elmore to be very high. He kind of put a little breeze in the gym there with that air ball. Quick substitution here for the maroon and white as Dylan Smith checks in. Also checking in for AM is number 12, Brandon Powell. AM looking to go small here to match up with Lipscomb. Peak. Gets the ball, takes a fake. Nice behind the back, steps back, takes a nice mid range. That one's nothing but net. He's feeling himself tonight. He's starting to get in his groove offensively. He's already had it defensively all year. Like, nice to see Amari knocking shots down for us. Benham answers with the three. Tyler's having his own personal three-point contest out there on the court. That's the second, third one in the um, second half so far. Tucker's layup is no good through the contact. Murr kicking the ball up the floor. Benham will try another three. He checked. That one's no good. Rebounded by Powell. Tucker now pushing the break. Over to Peak. Back to Tucker. Takes a fake. The layup is good and a foul. What a play by Amari Peak putting energy into Elwood Gymnasium as Tucker will have a chance to tie the ball game back at 44. And they're doing a good job of getting out on the breaks and with a nice patient play right there by Cameron, taking the contact and getting a chance to give us a tie ball game. Now. Checking in for a and will be number 33, Blaze Akinobe. At the line for the and one opportunity is Cameron Tucker. Nice game for Cameron with him stepping in for Messiah, being the leader he's been for this Bulldog team. He's been a good defensive player for us today. And when Cameron's scoring for us, it's always going to be a good game for us Bulldogs. Tucker knocks down the free throw to tie the ball game. Akinobe will check in for him now. Murray matched up against Smith. Murray spinning, driving baseline. Makes a tough pass. No, broken up and stolen. Nice recovery by Peak. Takes out to Smith. Spinning over the hands of Akinobe. Takes the contact. No, layup is short. Rebounded by Asadula. Over to Sneer. Sneer kicking the ball over to Murr. Out for Boyd. He'll tee up a three. That one's no good. Ball is tipped by Schneer. He tries to save the ball out of bounds. AM basketball. Checking in for the Bison will be number two, Will Pruitt. Checking back into this ball game, the sophomore guard out of Mount Juliet, Tennessee. It's crazy to see that. It looks like the Bulldogs have took Lipscomb playbook and used it on them. We've been doing a good job of using the fast break to our advantage. Peak takes a heat check. That one's no good for three. Pruitt out to Asadula. Asadula thought about a mirror range instead. Kicks it over to Schneer. Pruitt out to Benham. He'll try a three again. That one bounces around off the top rope. Out of bounds. Big adjustment here. Usually at the new event center. No wires to interfere. As that three is no good. As it hit the wire going back down, it will not count. A&M basketball. 
And besides Tyler Benham, Lipscomb has been having a real troubling time in the second half trying to see who's going to be that score for him as he's been doing a good job of keeping get out of the paint. What a move by Gary Hicks weaving through traffic to give A&M the two-point lead. 46-44, maroon and white. Boyd now kicks the ball over to Schneer. Inside for Asadula. Cross-court pass. He'll try a three from McGinnis. That one's no good. Rebounded by Smith. Out to Hicks. Hicks matched up against Brewer. Oh, he's crossing over. Which way did he go? He's driving inside. Tough layup through the contact. It's good! What a play by Gary Hicks. The microwave. Gary's in his bag right now. He did a good job of um, controlling his defender right there and doing what he does best. Nice floater in the paint. Four-point ball game here at Elmore Gymnasium for the maroon and white. Near on the wing. He drives baseline. He turns. He's matched up against Hicks. Cross-court pass over to McGinnis. He'll try a tough mid-range. That one is up and good. Man, that's what you need this basket for the Lipscomb offense. They've been, had a lid on the um, goal for the last couple of possessions. And who else would it come by by the hands of McGinnis, the hometown kid himself? Hicks over to Smith on the wing. Smith. Patient here on this possession. He kicks the ball over to Smith, to Hicks, excuse me. Hicks weaving out to Smith now. Less than 10 seconds on the shot clock. Five seconds now on the clock. Smith gets a screen from Powell. Tough layup off the glass and in as the clock expires. Time out. Coach Otis Hewley looking for an explanation on why a whistle wasn't called despite the contact. The layup was good as that will do it here. We have a quick timeout on the floor. 6.32 remaining in the second half. A&M holding on to a four-point lead, 50-46. Gymnasium, 6.32 remaining in the second half. A&M is holding on to a four-point lead. And what a game so far in this second half. It's been for the Maroon and White turning on the switch and are just making big plays when they're needed. Yeah, they really let the crowd take over the game for them. They let these turnovers and energy plays just swing the momentum for them. And a uh, tough foul right there. Yes, we'll have a foul there on the floor. Asadula was wide open there for the layup. Foul be charged to Dalen Smith. It'll be his second, team six. Ashadula is at the line for two. Last season, just last season against AM, he saw 17 minutes on the floor, three of seven from the field. No free throw attempts, but he finished the game with seven points, as that one is no good. Still a four-point game here at Elmore Gymnasium. Tucker out to Powell. Looking inside for Peek. No, he hesitates. Out to Tucker. As Lipscomb is now matched up into a zone. 1-3-1 one, one zone. Peek tries a mid-range. That one's short off the iron. We'll have a foul on the floor. Foul be charged to big EJ Williams as near went flying across the floor. And that's not necessarily a great foul here for the Maroon and White. That was one of the last things they needed was to put Lipscomb back at the line now from here on with that one-on-one -on -one opportunity. 
And it's been the complete opposite of the first half for our Bulldogs. We did a good job of staying out of the bonus until the very end of that first quarter. But with a, a couple of tough fouls that start this second half, we're now playing the free throw game for the rest of the game. If we foul with five minutes and 58 seconds left in this game. And I just want to say how impressive it's been to see this second half play for the Maroon and White as this is not an easy game against Lipscomb as Schneer misses the second of the two. Yeah, this is a real hot team they're playing. They're, we're a hot team of our set on with two wins in a row, but they're coming off of four after that tough loss from Notre Dame. So really nice game we're having so far at our um, men's Bulldog team. Peek back to Hicks. Hicks inside for Williams. Out to Hicks. Hicks will tee up a three. In and out. Rebounded by Schneer. Ball nearly lost there by Pruitt. He's able to recover it. He swings it over to Asadula. What a behind-the-back play there by Asadula into the hands of Pruitt. Ball went out of bounds. Lipscomb basketball with 21 seconds left on the shot clock. Yeah, that's the second time this game. He almost threaded one like that. Quick inbound right there. No good by Benham. Ball is nearly recovered by Tucker. Out of bounds. Maroon and white basketball. Nice hustle there by both teams as you see both teams are working hard here for that win as both players went crashing to the floor. Yeah, with this being a non-conference game, you wouldn't be able to tell with the energy that everybody's playing with so far and the energy that's in this Elmore gymnasium as well. Tucker over to Smith. Smith wide open, takes the mid-range. That one's good. Now set up by a great no-look pass by Cameron. Did a good job of looking off the defenders in the zone and finding Daly in the soft spot. Pruitt driving through traffic. Takes a tough layup. No good, but he'll be at the line for two. Foul is going to be on Daly Smith. That will be his third. Team's eighth. Ingham has to be careful here. With the fouling, don't want to accumulate down a stretch now. Ticky tack fouls to keep lips come in this ball game. Yeah, especially, especially with us nearing getting out of that one and one opportunity, with um, we can give enough free throws like this can easily get a team like this who's been cold in the second half offensively, get them going offensively in this game. And with it being a five point game, it doesn't take that much to swing the momentum. Threw it in the 87-49 win versus Trevecca Nazareth. Was able to put up a solid outing. Second of the two is good. Four-point ball game, 52-48. Peek over to Tucker. Tucker penetrating. Finds Downey. Downey over to Peek. Now to Tucker. Fakes. Takes a mid-range ahead of Asadula. That one bounces around and is good. Great manipulation of the zone right there by the Bulldogs. Did a good job of stalling defenders, keeping them in their spots. And nice open shot right there by Cameron. Through it. Gets a stream by Asadula. Looking to get the ball inside. He does just that for Agnosovic. Ball loose on the floor. Unable to recover it. Lips come basketball. I really like the adjustment we've made on the knock Agnosovic so far in this game. First half, um, especially in that beginning, he's doing a good job of getting in the paint and getting those ferocious done. But ever since then, we've been doing a good job of doubling and just making it uncomfortable for him in the post. Checking game for the Maroon and White is number 34, EJ Williams. Agnosovic looking for Asadula. Five seconds on the clock. Pass over for McGinnis. He'll try a three. No good. Ball is fought and rebounded by Smith. I still have a foul on the floor. And Smith cannot believe it as it looked like he thought it was a jump ball there on the floor. Yeah, it seemed like a clean play, but not according to the rest. And that's his fourth in the team's night. Tough foul in both situations. For him. We got a timeout here on the floor. 358 remaining in the second half. AM holding on to a lead here at Elmore Gymnasium. 
Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium as we're now getting into the closing minutes of the ball game. A&M holds on to a 54-48 lead as we return back now to the floor at the line for the one-on-one -on -one opportunity is Trey Benham as that free throw is no good. Peek back to Tucker. Tucker gets a screen from Williams. Penetrating out to Peak. Peak now driving against Agnasevich. He'll take the contact. Layup is just short. Foul will be on Agnasevich. That'll be his second. Team six. At the line for two is Amari Peak. Peek has had a solid game for the Bulldogs so far, bringing the energy and also helping put the Bulldogs ahead as well. Yeah, he's playing how um, Coach O wanted him to play coming into this for this team. He's starting to, he's always been a good defensive energy player for us, but what he's brought for us on the offensive side has really been a positive for this team. Quick substitution here by both teams as Powell checks in as well for Lipsicum. Quick substitution as Agnosevich will check out and Pruitt will check in. Also, quick substitution here for the Maroon and White. Eric Lee will check into the ball game. Boyd driving up the floor, penetrating. Tough shot over Tucker is good. Tucker having to scale back the aggression there defensively as AM has been Alling up on the team foul column here yeah. with nine. Last yeah. thing you want to do is put them in a double bonus. Yeah, and this can definitely notice that as you see on that position, they turned up their aggressiveness on the offensive side. Tough shot by Peak. No good off the front iron. Ball is tipped. Loose mm. as Lipscomb will take over. Fifty six fifty. Boyd matched up against Tucker. Boyd looking to drive. Great close out there. Three ball is up by Benham. No good. Rebounded by Asadula. No! Stolen right out of his hands by Garrett Hicks. What a defensive play. It looked like it was going to be an easy offensive rebound by Asadula as well for a lips come and it's ripped right out of his hands. Yeah, Garrett showed off his vert on that one and his hustle as well is stripping that one out of his um, also showed his strength as well on that one as he was able to just rip it out of his hands. He talked earlier about his off-season program as that one is good by Hicks. Yeah, like Through it. Like you said earlier, microwave for this offense. Gary did a good job of keeping us in his game. Through it spins. Take the contact. And is denied by Hicks. What a defensive play by Hicks. He comes up with the loose ball. He'll take the solo layup. It's good. Gary Hicks. What a defensive play. Turning into quick offense for the Maroon and White. How about that? The shot denial as Pruitt put his shoulder into Hicks. And the ball went loose in the air. And who else came up with it? 
on other than the captain himself able to come up with the solo layup to put the Bulldogs ahead 60 to 50. Yeah, Gary had his hands in on the last couple of possessions with two baskets and then with the defensive stop in there as well. Like we said earlier, he's really been a key leader for the team and a key leader in this game as he's been the, one of the standout players in helping us get this 10-point lead so far in this game. With 2.05, we'll have a quick timeout break here as a &M is holding on now to a double-digit lead, 60-50. to 50. Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium as Maroon and White hold on to a 10 point lead, 60 to 50. Boy, what a second half it has been for the Bulldogs. Turning up the heat defensively and finding ways to create easy offensive opportunities. McGinnis driving now, cross court pass over. Nice hockey pass there. Boyd tries a three, wing, it's good. Now Lipscomb's going to add some pressure themselves here. Smith over to Hicks. He'll try a mid-range. That one's around the rim, no good. Out to Pruitt. Pruitt pushing the pace now. Quickly out to McGinnis. He'll try another three. That one's good. Four-point ball game here as Lipscomb has found life. 131 remaining in the second half. The Bulldogs' lead has now been trailed to just four. Yeah, he flipped the switch right there, and you can see Coach O is not happy with that shot by Garrett as he would have rather him draw the clock down as with a minute and 30 left in this game, there's not that many possessions left. Absolutely, and you hit the nail on the head there, Juwan, as the last thing a and needed was to rush a shot up after that huge three coming on the wing by Pruitt. You know, you just wanted to, you wanted to see A&M take some more time off the clock, like you said. Bring it out. Let's milk the clock down. Force them to foul us. And that foul would have put us in a one-on-one -one opportunity. Yeah, and now, with, like we said, with a minute and 30 left, with it, it being a four-point game, anything can happen, especially how college basketball goes. And with the free throw shooting for both teams been going this game, it can go either way with the momentum. So I'd like to see how our um, men's bull ball team come out this timeout defensively and try and hold the Lipscomb team down as they've been hot since that last timeout we just had. Uh, so we'll take a quick break here with a full timeout. AM leads by 4, 60, 56. Welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium. A&M looking to close out this ball game as they lead by four, 60-56. Powell now on the wing. He'll take a fake. Out to Tucker. Ball nearly stolen by Boyd there as he just missed it. Have to be careful here. Tucker gets a screen from Harville. Tucker penetrates. Nice hesitation. Layup is above. Agnasevich, ball is loose, recovered by Tucker. Great offensive rebound right there for the board balls. Can run some more clock off the um, more time off the clock right there with that. Tucker gets a screen by Harville. Tucker penetrating again, loses the ball out of bounds with five seconds remaining on the shot clock. Tough play by Tucker as that one went out of bounds as he was looking to try to make a play on the penetration after the screen by Harville. And it gives this one a chance here to bring it down to a one position game. We'll have a quick substitution here 
for the maroon and white. Checking again is number 33. And Blaze Akanobe. Great shot blocker. It's Coach Otis Uli looking to add some defense here and make it tough for the Bison. Denno out to Pruitt over to Boyd. Boyd nearly loses the ball. He's able to recover it on the baseline. He'll penetrate on the baseline. Cross court pass over to Benham. Wide open for three. That one's no good. Rebounded by Akanobe. It, he'll be fouled. Yeah. That'll start the free throw game right there. That foul will be charged to Pruitt. That'll be his first, team seven. Yeah, great rebound right there by Blaze. Getting up, getting, securing it, and drawing the foul. At the line for the one and one is Blaze Akinobe. I'm trying my hardest right now to not give up <laughs> a jinx here. The last thing I want. I know Coach, Coach is probably smiling and laughing at me right now as AM holds a four point lead. If that one is no good. I tried my hardest, Coach, if you're out there watching. McGinnis will try a layup, it's denied by Smith. Ball has came up by the hands of Powell. Powell fighting down low, trying to call a timeout. We're gonna have... Timeout. We're gonna have something here as we get the officials timeout. Notice there, what a fight for the ball by Powell as he was able to come up with the rebound, but what a defensive play by Dalen Smith. High in the foul count, does not care, putting it all on the line and denies it on the glass. Yeah, he took the words out of my mouth with four fouls right there for him to get up and get that Bron edge chase down block to hopefully secure a um, win right here for our Bulldogs. Nice energy play as that changed it from a, two, a one position game to a two position. Keep it a two position game just like that. Okay, Juwan, so the guys are back on the floor now as Tucker will inbound the ball. Also still on the floor is Big Blaze Akinobe, as well as Hicks, Powell, and Smith. Just get the ball in, get across half court. Hicks, match with a trap, but he'll be fouled. Foul will be charged to Schneer. That'll be his second, team's eighth. Quick substitution here for the Bison is number 41. And Agnog. See, they're, they're confusing us here. I, I had it on point. I've been great all game today. But Jacob Agnosevich will check in for the Bison. Yeah, with Garrett out of line, this, Garrett at the line, this has been a wonderful game for him. He's been doing a good job of keeping us in this game offensively and defensively. Free throw rolls around and is out. Ball is loose on the floor. And guess who's able to recover it? Right on cue. Smith over to Blaze Akinobe, and he'll be fouled with 9.2 seconds remaining on the clock. How about the heart? It's not the skill of the man. It's the will of a man. It Hicks missed the free throw, then dropped his head, dove on the ground for the loose ball. It comes up with another offensive possession for the Bulldogs. And those are winning plays right there. Keeping the energy up, following your shot, getting the rebound, and also doing a good job of getting it out to a fellow teammate. And now with nine seconds in the, uh, left in this game, it's our game, game to lose. We just have to continue to play clean basketball. And we can walk out of this with a third straight win in a row. Akinobe gets the first free throw to bounce around and it's good. There's a tradition right there as we're starting to hear our fellow Bulldogs pull those keys out. Sign that it's time to go home. Second free throw is good as we'll have a quick substitution here for the Maroon and White. Checking into the ball game is number 24, Eric Lee. If you're missing the action here at Elmore Gymnasium, don't worry, we have you covered on December 12th. That's right, December 12th, this Monday, A&M will take on South Alabama right here on the beautiful campus of Alabama A&M.
as Lee went sliding onto the floor. He's still down. That three is good by Pruitt. We'll have a quick timeout as Lee is still down on the floor as he is grasping at his knee. What a gruesome slip and fall by Lee as he's still on the ground. Yeah. What a gruesome fall there by Lee. It's like it may have been a wet spot still exactly left there on the floor. That's the last thing you want with such a great game being played by Bulldogs with this much time left in the game. You don't want to see an injury. As Lee is unable to put weight on, on the ground to walk. What a scary fall there by Lee. Wishing for the best here as we'll come out of the timeout break. 2.8 seconds remaining in the ball game. AM is clinging on to a three-point lead. As we just missed before that, on the despite Lee falling, game went on and a three was knocked down by the bison to cut the lead to just three. Powell catches the inbound pass and he'll be fouled by McGinnis. Powell at the line. First free throw, no good. Powell just needs one to go down so he can send us all packing and happy with the Bulldog victory. Second free throw is good. 63-59. Benham will try a long three, and that one is no good. The Bulldogs will pull off three in a row as they take this one 63-59. How about that second half from the maroon and white? What a second half, Juwan. The guys were able to find the energy defensively and turned it into quick offense. As we saw earlier on in the second half, Guys like Amari Peak and then Xavier Brewer and also, of course, the captain and Gary Hicks were able to pull off some great fast break opportunities off of the steals. And these guys were able to take care of home business. Yeah, and they did exactly what we said we needed them in the, um, after the first half. They took that energy they had in the first half and seemed to multiply it by 10 as defense was the key turned it into offense it led to plenty of energy plays and dunks and layups and threes as well from Garrett and especially how we locked up Onoxovich there in the second half didn't let him get any clean um, shots in the paint like he did early in the first half great win for coach O third one in a row especially another one here at home for the um, Bulldog team and like to see what his um, insight he could give us from this great win we just had as we'll be awaiting Head coach Otis Kewley joining us at the end of this one. The Bulldogs take care of business, 63-59.
Good afternoon and welcome back to Elmore Gymnasium as A&M takes a big one here. 63-59, Chauncey Sanders and Juwan Davis being joined now alongside by none other than head coach Otis Hewley. Coach, it was a tough one in that first half. It looked like the guys were a bit stagnant offensively, uh, having a hard time finding easy shots. And somehow you guys came out in that second half and you guys were full throttle, straight forward ahead. What did you preach in that halftime to get the guys going in the second half? Well, it's tough when you have a week off. You know, those guys have been playing. We had we had finals and we couldn't really, you know, get keep ourselves in competition mode. So it took that little bit of time to realize, man, we need more man movement, ball movement. And we need to cut with purpose. Guys were just passing and jogging and you know, not really understanding the the uh, the moment, and uh, well, we we had to have a few words with a couple of guys, and I guess I'm a little intense, but <laughs> so is Coach it. Petaway. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, oh um, yeah. But I thought they showed a lot of resilience, and they responded to the call, and that's a big win. This team Huge went to win. Notre Dame, and only lost by one. That's right. They were number two in the A Sun. And fought hard against Liberty as well. Mm -hmm. And fought hard against season. Liberty, absolutely. Right. And also, they went to UTC, Chattanooga, mm -hmm. who went deep in the NCAA tournament last year and right. beat them and on their, their home floor yep. they and won that champions. conference. That's right. Conference yeah. championship. And they beat them on their home floor this year. That's right. So this was a, a huge win for our guys. And what it does is it helps them understand that we got a little inhibited and you know, a little intrepidation set in, and our guys exploited it. Definitely making the long passes. And we saw that flips come, making longer passes than usual, and it was slipping out of her hands. Or they had a couple plays where it looked like the guy was in trouble trying to penetrate, and they tried to kick out, and it was a little bit too much on the pass. We saw one going to the third row as well in the second half. But what I really love was that you guys were able to punish them when they made the turnovers. Quick offense. And from the defense. Yeah. We saw Xavier get out and get a nice breakaway slam to get the crowd going. We saw Garrett get a couple of fast break opportunities, even getting assists over to uh, Cameron Tucker. But I also want to talk about Tucker and how huge he was stepping up without Messiah in that backcourt with Hicks. Yeah, it really wore him down. He had just gotten over being a little under the weather, and so it was really tough on his body with those minutes. But he stepped up to the challenge, and he played like you guys are used to Karen Tucker playing in last year's uh, postseason. That's right. He was and very aggressive. And also, Coach, your bench came up huge as well. When I saw Amari Pete come in that game and he got that first one to go, you could instantly tell that his energy was ready for this ball game, that he was ready to come up and get another shot. You know, he just looked. He couldn't wait to take another shot how everything was just seeming like the rim was like as wide as the ocean for him. He could knock it down. Yeah, he's, that was awesome. he's really good offensively. We're working on his defense, and he's got to play on both ends of the floor. You can't score 10, give up 15. <laughs> you know, now you're minus five. Yeah. But we're trying to get him to score 10 and give up none. If he gives up two or three, that's okay. We're still up seven or eight. Um, so he's working on being a two-way player, not just a guy that, you know, ball stopper or somebody that see, pass it to the rim all the time. Right. Learn how to take his shot in the flow of what we do as a team because he's, he's unstoppable once he gets going toward the rim. Now we've seen Anoxovich had a great start to the game with those three ferocious slams and it seemed like with him being a 19 point per, um, game scorer for him, they, they were trying to get him feet and going. But it seemed like y'all started doubling and just making it tough for him to get in the post and get clean shots down over. Is that one of the key emphasis for y'all this game? Absolutely. You know, we wanted guys to play in the crowd. And once he started playing in the crowd, it got difficult for him. Even when he got down there by himself, he had trouble finding the basket or finding the rim. Our trouble was when Blaze was off the floor, we couldn't come up with the rebound. Mm -hmm. And Blaze got hurt. It, made, it was tough. And then when we just turned it up defensively in the beginning. We were in like a matchup, and there wasn't no pressure on the basketball. That's why they played so free. When we start getting in their faces and cutting the lane off, the whole That's world right. changed. That's right. Now, Coach, I also want to touch on your captain and Gary Hicks. It felt like down the stretch he came up big for you guys, and I tend to uh, go to him from time to time after the game and off air as well, saying, hey, man, you know, you take some time off this floor. We need you to be ready on go all the time, you know, a lot more consistent. We need you active, you know, and that's been something we also talked about, just having Gary being active on the floor 
how great was it to see him miss that last free throw and not drop his head, but instead go and get the offensive rebound and get a great possession he for us. He dove to get back on, on the, the floor. He's the commensurate leader. That's right. Garrett Hicks is a pro. People just don't know it yet. He's working right. on being a high-level two-way player. He's got some things that he's he's developing with his ball handling. But that kid is a San Antonio Spurs, a Golden State Warrior pro, waiting to happen. I'm telling you, when, when guys start catching up with what we're doing, then it'll take a lot of attention off him, and he'll get going free again, and, boy, it's over. Because he's the guy that can play from any any part of the floor. He can shoot it. He can create his own shot. He can get open off without the basketball. We ran a set for him on that flare, and he knocked it down. We did, right. we did a ball screen. He got to the basket. We ran a couple of things for him. He drew the attention in the Marsh court. So his impact on the floor, we just got to get him the right rest so he can play on that end too because it's hard. How about the rebound he came yeah, up with? Yeah, I was just saying he showed his bird off with that one, then grabbed out his hand. He makes a lot of – under um stated athletic plays for y'all he gets up there and he's really as small he's there can get up with um pretty much anybody here in this gymnasium yeah when you look up understated i bet garrett's pictures in there i'm telling you because that kid doesn't get enough credit for what the impact he has on the floor man i'm just excited about having him dalen brandon powell that is a great young crew as far as experience with with me and my system and to have a win like this, that was a team win with their leadership. Also great leadership, just as you touched on it. And the thing I love the most is they threw so much stuff at you guys, whether it was in the man zone. And then they did go into a zone later on in the second half once you guys started to break away. And they said, okay, let's try to force them to get some shots up now so we can get out on the run. And you guys were able to break that down with these. You saw a mid-range right in front of us here on the baseline from Hicks. We saw Tucker able to get some mm -hmm. plays going in the penetration. Dalen hit a nice one Dalen on the baseline. Dalen hit a nice one as well. That's right. Yeah. Now, Coach, you guys are going to have to look forward to a really tough schedule now going into the rest of December as we get ready for the new year. You guys will take on South Alabama right here Monday. Really good. Mm -hmm. And then as I well, see. we'll get ready to follow up on the road. Before we do that, though, we'll also have one more game right here as it's not on the schedule. But we'll have one more game right here in – this campus of Alabama A&M on December 15th as well. What can we expect in this upcoming schedule? What do you expect in this upcoming schedule for your program to learn? But also, how do you expect the guys to respond to this level of competition coming up? As well, well, we want to, you know, a lot, historically they've been playing games to, you know, really create a resource to, to help, and help the program, supplement the program, and you don't have a whole lot of chance to win. But now we're playing games that really challenge us as well, but you have a chance to win and you can sleep in your own bed. A lot of times you play these kind of games and you do it just to win and then it doesn't go forward. We, won't, we don't want to just win. We want to grow, develop, uh, start building our culture, building what we want to do and try to win. Or what you've done is lost. That's right. You want it to pay forward. And that's what we want out of these games. No money games. That's yeah, right. And we want to go to the SWAC ready to play. Yeah, I was just that's about right. to bring it up. Wins like this and games like this is against different um, type of strategies and different teams that run different things. So when you get into that SWAC play, you've seen a lot, little bit of everything. So it's just going out there and accomplishing and doing and finishing the game plan and just doing out there and playing good basketball. That's right. That's right. Now, Coach, last question here for you before we wrap things up with you. Um, we just want to talk about the effort these guys shown. What were your thoughts on the effort tonight from your team, especially in that second half? Unbelievable. I thought the resolve and, the, you know, in the past when they got down shooting threes, we never came back mm -hmm. last year. Like Jacksonville, Western Kentucky, you know what I'm saying? Those threes hit them, and it, it, playing the matchup, you really couldn't come back. But they were smart. They were using that opportunity to build that matchup so when they got to the SWAC, they would have a chance to win down the stretch. And it worked. Perfect. Well, we're trying to do both. We're trying to build that matchup, get better defensively, and our man-to-man, -man, and grow and get better. We're trying to do just both. Not just play for, for the future, but play for now and the future. That candy now or later. That's right. That's what it's called. <laughs> now and later. And you guys showed up 
better than ever today on this floor and secured the huge win, 63-59. Coach, congratulations on a huge win again. The Third guys are row. looking good. Three in a row, the guys are looking good offensively, and they're getting better defensively, and it's starting to translate into great Ws for this team as they go forward now. Appreciate it, guys. Appreciate you, Coach. Thanks. God bless. That was head coach Otis Hewley joining us on the live stream. Huge game today from the team. It was an all-around collective effort from this ball club, whether it was guys off the bench like Amari Pete as well as Brandon Powell, to guys that were in the starting lineup that we saw in familiar faces with that great backcourt tandem of last season with Cam Tucker filling in for Messiah Thompson as well as Gary Hicks. Yeah, in games like this, like you said, when you can get – a little bit out of everything for everybody, you can get a win. And these are good games that build character for us. We getting in a good motion, and especially, like you said, with this being a new team, a new coach, a lot of new players finding their roles. Mm -hmm. Games like this just help build us as a team. So by the time we get to SWAC, everybody know what they need to do, and we can just play good basketball. Definitely. And now they have to look forward over to South Alabama as well. And then, like you said, we're, we're not trying to have money games here. And I think that's been just something that we saw in the SWAC alone is the money game – narrative is officially over mm -hmm. when it comes to this conference we are done and passed with just collecting a butt whooping and going on our own merry way and saying thank you for helping us grow our program these teams are are going after it and we saw it several times in this conference now with several mm -hmm. teams beating uh major uh power five teams as well when it comes to gremlin and texas mm -hmm. southern securing huge victories and then recently uh jackson state secured a huge mm -hmm. victory on the road as well against great talented teams that we've saw several times in tournament play so when you when you go to these games such as illinois and vanderbilt and they also have a game before the new year against ohio state in columbus after they just had a huge victory last night they're not looking for just a learning game they're looking for we a learning it. and winning game they're looking for to win and we just saw that today on full display here at elmore gymnasium against lipscomb yeah, and the more that happens, the more respect, the more notoriety that will come to this SWAT conference. It's been a lot of good basketball played through the whole conference and a lot of good coaching. And when we can get these good wins and then even with um, the ones that are losses, just not let it be a blowout and be over with 10 minutes, 8 That's minutes right. in the first half. When you can do things like that, people will start putting more respect on your teams and on your name. So by the time we get into SWAT tournament play, teams that start seeing us um, people who've watched like the Ohio State and the Illinois and seen us play them they can watch the tournament and be like oh, I've seen them have a good game I want to see if they can come out and win in their tournament so it's not only just big for the program it's big for the whole conference and just growth of the whole HBCU swag and just basketball in general for us definitely now final thoughts here as we get ready to close here at Elmore Gymnasium we also want to say a congratulations again to head coach Van Petaway as he is out tonight. Usually he is right here alongside me and then enthusiastic and asking questions about the ball game and a huge win alongside me with Otis Hughley, but also encouraging the guys and picking the guys up and calling on one of his favorite players in Brandon Powell. But today he is out celebrating his daughter's graduation. Congratulations to not just Coach, but to his daughter and the Petaway family entirely, as that is such a huge accomplishment. We are so proud of her and also proud of the great father we know Coach to be as well. As we know they are celebrating, we're looking forward to him coming back. Juwan, last thoughts now as we get ready to close out, not just on coach but also on the game as well yeah and beautiful picture like right that that we're seeing and coach he gets a good w, um w for the day for him got to see his daughter graduate i know he checked in on his game and seen a nice tough hard fought win for us so been a great day for a and m in general with us having a good fought win and all the a and m graduates we had today so like to see if we could just keep this energy going and with the big monday game against my hometown school of south alabama I'd like to see with the women's and men's team both having a nice team um this year see how we'll match up with them definitely as that will do it here at elmore gymnasium we have a maroon and white winner 63 59 we'd like to thank you all for joining us for the amazing people that work behind the scenes that you don't get to see for the amazing administration here at the campus of alabama a&m as well as Jawan davis and for myself we'd like to say good night and we'll see you on monday as a&m will take on 
the South Alabama Jags right here on the Alabama A&M Athletics YouTube live stream. Good night, everybody.